Flying geese are kind of like ants. You never see just one of them. This block is used in a lot of patterns in a lot of different ways. I'm gonna show you some of the things I consider when picking out quilting designs for those blocks. Hey, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy and welcome to the free motion challenge Quilting Along. This is a free video series where I'm helping to answer that uh, most mystical question, how do I quilt it? And in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite designs for the flying geese block. And this is the video where you realize how lazy I really am. That does not make me sound so good. Well, we don't have to say lazy. Let's call it quilting efficient. What I mean is I pick designs based on where I need to go. So if I'm looking at a block and I need to come back to my starting point, I'm gonna pick a design that does that. If I need to start at one point and end at the other, I'm gonna pick a design that does that. And by the time we're done, you'll see how you too can quickly work through those flying geese blocks. Let me show you what I mean. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love feathers. In these flying geese blocks, if I wanna put a feather in there, which I mean, let's face it, of course I do, I know that I can't fit a whole feather in that small space. Instead of quilting the whole feather, I'm just gonna quilt half. And I'm gonna use the seam of the block as my spine and quilt them from there. That's gonna really help it fit that irregular shape and also do that all important thing, help me move to the opposite side of my block. Using the seam at the bottom as my spine and extending the feather into that irregular triangle shape. I'm quilting a more custom variation in these strips. These petals are quilted in groups of two. One petal that goes out, traveling back and around, and quilting the second petal so that it comes back into the spine. Now I'm using those traditional bump hump feathers, but you can do any feather variation with this. You can do a basic feather, a paisley feather, whatever. I just love how that feather starts at one side, ends at the other, and gives my flying geese block a beautiful curvy look. But now that I'm at the end of the block, I wanna go ahead and quilt this other triangle before I move on. So I need a design that's gonna come back to the starting point. If you wanna add a more geometric look to your quilt, you can do some dot to dot quilting. Now this was a design in my free motion challenge quilting along dot to dot quilting, where we create these wedges that come back to the starting point. Quilt a line that angles out towards the outer edge, echoes the side of the block about an inch or so, and goes back to the starting point, making a wedge shape that's filling in part of the block. And then I can just keep adding more of those wedges until the whole triangle is filled in. You could add more or less wedges depending on how big that triangle is, but most importantly, it's bringing me back to the starting point. And then once I'm finished with those wedges, I'm perfectly placed to quilt more feathers in the next red triangle. Once that block is finished, I can continue on to the next block, quilting a design, moving across the quilt. It's a win-win. If you don't have a ruler or you don't like the wedge-shaped design, you could do a continuous curve. Like I've already said, it really doesn't matter what you put in here as long as you get back to the starting point so that you can go ahead and move on. What's awesome about this wedge design is that the lines that they all come back to can be anywhere you want it to be. On the pink block, it happened to be the top corner, but on the red block, I'm gonna make it one of the side corners. This is the perfect way to draw attention to an area of the quilt that you wanna show off. This is not the perfect way to hide a part of the quilt that you're not a fan of, so be sure to use this in areas that you really love. And even though I love the look, it doesn't exactly get me where I need to go. If that happens, I use traveling to get to the next block. I love the curvy look of the feather next to that dot to dot geometric shape. The contrast really helps to highlight the two different triangles in the piecing. Let's add a little bit of texture with the wavy wavy design. We actually saw this design in the borders and backgrounds challenge, but I love it in triangles because it fits triangles of all different sizes and shapes. Starting from one of the corners, I'm gonna travel along the edge and quilt a wavy line that angles towards the outer point and up to the other side. But once I get to that point, I'm just gonna travel along the edge again, that same distance, and then repeat, quilting another wavy line towards the point. I'm gonna quilt the points so that they're closer together and the outer edges so the lines are wider apart. That's gonna help give it a really neat look and it also helps fill up the triangle evenly. Then I'm just gonna keep doing that until the whole triangle's filled in. Once I'm done, I need to get to my next point so I can continue quilting the design. So what I'm gonna do is travel along the seam to get to that point. 
Okay, so one thing I'm gonna point out is that means that on my seam, I'll have some lines that are traveled on twice. I'm okay with that. It's gonna help me move along the quilt more efficiently and get done faster. And then I'm gonna do the same in the next block. And here's a tip. If you bought the coordinating thread collection, you don't have to use the red in all the triangles. Use the red thread in the darker triangles and then use that light yellow thread in the lighter ones. That may sound a little weird, but yellow is kind of the magic color and it will make this design look great on those lighter blocks. And if you love the design, you can do it in triangles on both sides. It's gonna create a really cool look. Now I'm actually quilting these blocks so that I'm working in a vertical motion. I find that's easier for me. However, you might try it horizontally and see if you prefer it that way. When quilting on a long arm, you don't really have the choice of changing the orientation of your quilt. So you have to be comfortable quilting these designs in all different directions. And if you want to see how to use this in a border, which is really cool too, you can check out the description box below. I have a link to that as well. I just love how I'm able to go from triangle to triangle to triangle quickly and easily. All right, are you ready for your challenge? If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel for this challenge, quilt the flying geese blocks with the design or designs that you prefer. And if you can't remember exactly how the designs go together, don't worry, I have a downloadable PDF with quilting diagrams and tip sheets. You can find the information about that in the description box below. Hey, have you joined our free motion challenge quilting along Facebook group? If you wanna encourage other quilters, share what you're working on and talk about all things machine quilting related, I hope you'll join over there and see what's going on. Because quilting is so much more fun when you do it with others. Thank you so much for watching. Happy quilting.